My name is Donnie McCall. My company is Invisirac, and our flagship product is the Invisirac Innovative Cargo Management System. I'm seeking $100,000 in exchange for 10% equity in my company. Now, it's because of my wife that I'm here today and have created such an incredible product. You see, I own a construction company in my small town, and I use my truck both personally and professionally. And there are times when I need to carry longer material and equipment to the job sites, but not every day. Well, the only solution has been a permanent rack that is always up and in the way. <laughs> well, my wife said she wasn't going to ride with me if I had a rack on my truck and it looked like a work truck all the time. Well, one day I was driving down the Blue Ridge Parkway, and I was inspired. Now, I wasn't trying to create anything, so I believe the Lord handed me this idea. In less than 30 seconds, my truck can be a transformer. I can carry ladders or lumber, canoes or kayaks, safely and securely up here while leaving the bed open for all my other gear. And also in less than 30 seconds, I can fold it down and now I can take my wife shopping or even out on a hot date. It's why I believe that Invisirac has solved the problems that I face and the problems that I believe nearly every truck owner out there faces. Now we introduced Invisirac to the market in November 2010 at the SEMA show in Las Vegas, and we were pretty overwhelmed by the response that we got. Now I'm committed to making Invisirac and its accessories in the United States. I'm one man trying to do his best for this country. Now, I know a truck rack's not going to save the U.S. economy, but I want to do something that can bring some jobs and some hope to my small town. Now I want to help my family and investors financially, but also my church, community, state, and country in any way that I can. I believe that my vast life experience has brought me to this moment. And blessings are when preparation meets opportunity, and I stand before you prepared. Thank you. All right, all right, hold on. Before we go any further there, that is ding-ding worthy. You know, the, the passion... Uh, that he's bringing to the table right there, Donnie. It's it's great to see. Uh, obviously, this is season three, episode two of Shark Tank. Um, I, I I I love all of it. I love like soup the nuts. Like he is passionate. He he's got he's got faith. He wants to do well by him. You know, by his family, by his uh, by his community, his his uh, church, his his city, state. All the way up to the country, right? And and creating jobs is absolutely awesome. Um, just one little thing about that. Uh, you're, if I'm setting a truck up for being able to go out and do work on like a five, you know, five day, six day, seven day thing. If I have like you know my tools and I have uh, the ladder and everything kind of set up in there. Um, I don't know that I'm going to want to have to like pull out at least the ladder, right? Like, you know, tools can be in the toolbox up front, um, up towards the front of the, the truck, uh, the truck. But, but when you start talking about stuff like lumber and things like that, like you're gonna have to like take all that down just so you could, uh, get your wife. So I, I don't know that the reasoning makes a whole lot of sense, uh, as much as, the ability, you know, I, I think for certain, you know, there's a certain segment of the market that just makes a lot of sense for, right? I mean, look, I, I live in the Philadelphia area, uh, the blue collar. We have lots of business, uh, you know, business owners. You know, you go down the, the neighborhoods and you see a lot of work trucks, right? Trucks that are set up for work, not just for going to get groceries and things, but but like actually like they're they're getting work done with those trucks. They're hauling things back and forth, tools, uh, supplies, et cetera. So uh, I absolutely can appreciate it. I just don't know if, you know, how much it makes sense. I'm, I'm really curious. I want to see how much it costs. How much does it cost versus like a, a regular rack? And if that's the case, especially being made in America, which again, ding, ding is awesome, but it, it just creates uh, a, pr a potential for a price point uh, collapse. Uh, if, if, it, if, it's, if you're so far apart from just, you know, what does a regular rack cost? Um, though, I mean, in that case, like it still could be cheaper than having a whole separate truck. But if you're running a business, uh, your own business, then then you start to look at the write-offs and things of that nature to justify having a second vehicle just for that. Um, 
And speaking of having something just for that, we have a comment featured in this video. It'll be at the end of the video. So see, stay tuned to see if your comment will be featured here on the Super Joe Pardo, Pardo channel. And uh, while we're paused, make sure you smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm so we can get this video into the hands of more super entrepreneurs like yourself. How much can the Invisirac hold? What's the weight bared load testing on it? We have put 1,500 pounds statically on here. Still have not crushed it yet because it was on my truck, so I didn't. I wasn't ready to destroy my truck just yet. <laughs> well, I definitely would go for exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. And will it fit on any generic pickup truck? It will. We actually fit on 36 million of the 40 million trucks in two part numbers. That Even are the right. Japanese ones? Nice. Even the Japanese ones. Where are you building these? They come from different parts around the country, Ohio, Wisconsin. Uh, we bring it all back to my, my hometown in Sparta, North Carolina. Is there hope to employ more people I from hope your hometown? To ho I hope to employ employ hundreds of people. It seemed to me when you were talking about the hometown that that was very important. It What's is going on there? Is something bad happening? Well, we're just in an economically depressed region of North Carolina, especially, and we, we've had some, we've had textiles over the years that have now gone away. We've had uh, 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 an aggregate company that has gone away, and, and so we're kind of, we're kind of stuck there. Donnie, have you had any sales? We've got... Uh, before we go for, you know, that is a huge issue, uh... You know, I mean, look at like Detroit, right? There was, you know, the auto industry of the world was there and, and it's just been picked apart, uh, you know, piece by piece by piece, jobs sent to, to Mexico, to all, all everywhere else. Um, and, and even, uh, you know, I was just talking to somebody this, uh, I think like, a, actually, yeah, just this weekend. And we were talking about like you know old old car things and stuff like that, and and uh, manufacturers being you know other manufacturers, other manufacturers from other parts of the world having their manufacturing plants here in America. Uh, there's like Hyundai comes to mind, Toyota comes to mind, Volkswagen comes to mind, especially down south and probably not too far where Donnie's from. Um, and you know I I I think about that and and you know if those plants like leave all of a sudden it it, it just creates a, a vacuum you know of of uh, people are there they're they want to stay there they grew up there and and all of a sudden like if something were to happen to those manufacturers they said you know it's actually cheaper if we just made it in mexico or made it in canada and we shipped it across the border and paid the tax uh you know the tariffs or whatever that that comes along with that uh plus the extra shipping costs all of a sudden, like it, you know, it create it just creates a vacuum, and and I I just I love, you know, part of what I I my mission is to create and save jobs, right? So helping you entrepreneurs, helping you small business owners get to that next level is is all about helping more people, helping those people's families and those people's you know fa fa families of families and and things like that. So it's it. It all starts with us as the entrepreneurs, as the small business owners who create these opportunities for, to bring other awesome people and create amazing teams. And together we get so much more done. That's why together here in the super community, you know, the super community uh, is is so awesome that we get so many people um, who want to change not only their own lives, their families' lives, but the family, you know, other people's lives and their families' lives. And the families of the families that that are affected uh, by you having something like like this, right? Um, this is a, you know an opportunity to have one truck and maybe be, employ somebody else to help you instead of paying that that second truck payment or or something that effect when you're just getting off the ground, or uh, or being able to to give your employees you know this Invisirac right for for their trucks. And not have it impede, like not have it impede upon their uh, own personal vehicles, and you pay them the uh, a fee, you know, the um, uh, like a, a stipend or a, a, a I can't think of the a, uh, a, a car allowance, a truck allowance, if you will, uh, so that you don't have to have that oper, you know, like okay, now we got to buy a second truck, and it's just and the and the price and the, everything just stacks on itself. So getting people all, help helping people get off the ground is is. Eight, you know, I love, I love that. Fifty thousand dollars in sales in this first year. Since Fifty thousand. Wow. 50, 000 okay. And that's how many units? It's uh, approximately one hundred and fifty units. Donnie, you fall into the market of enhancing mm -hmm. a truck, so secondary purchase somebody has to make. There's a huge distribution system that provides for that mm -hmm. here in America. Uh, why aren't you selling to a distributor? Because they want too many points right now. It's not something where well, we hold can Hold on there, right? Well, the, the, the first question should be, what's it cost to make? About $250 inside the box. 
okay. fixed calls. Sorry, Dad, the distributors want to pay you how much today? What's what's the price they want to buy that? They think it has to be somewhere in the low 300s. And you're making it for 250 Ooh. today. Right. And at what volume do you have to get to in order to get to 150? If you can't get to 100, I don't know that we could get to 150 in the U.S. Um, okay, hold on there, Donnie, for a second. You said before that you wouldn't consider. I'm not going to consider. I'm just saying we wouldn't but, be able to. But let's just let's just test that for a moment. Okay. Let's just say for a second that a manufacturer in Asia could make it for $150 in quantities of, let's say, a thousand. Mm -hmm. All right. That puts you in business right now, my friend. You'd be in business with a distributor that you're not doing any business with right now, and yet you're saying no to that. Why? Because it's not a product that needs a distributor. We could sell direct to the retailer, of which there are about 10,000 that we could get to. But how do we get to them? For $100,000 that you're asking for today, what would you use the 100000 for? The 100000 I would use right now would be to create displays, to create a display where it has this model on a, uh, on a system that is clamped to it and have, you know, the, uh, a, a billboard or, I mean, a placard behind it. We call those POPs. The POP, right. Point of purchase. And, right. But you don't have any orders. I have plenty that want product free, for free. so that they can... Right. So you are going to not only displays. go into the manufacturing business, but you're going to go into the financing business at this point. Because that means that you're going to, as we say in the business, hold the paper. Mm -hmm. you're, you're going to send it to the retailer and hopefully they'll pay you. But basically you're making it and you're selling it. Well, that's not what I'm saying is right now I'm not consigning anything. I'm you're not, not because you don't have any orders. With $50,000... Right. Okay. So yeah, that, I mean, that's a, that's a tricky thing, right? So, you know, the hundred thousand gets us to build uh, the displays and then displays get there and then hope for the best that it sells. I mean, he sold 150 units so far, but to, to ramp that up in that manner, uh, I don't know that that's a great use of the hundred, you know, hundred of a hundred thousand dollars. Here's, here's my, here's my, what I would say. If you have something like this, and you're like, we're going to go direct to those, you know, those truck upgrading facilities. Uh, and we have a couple of them around here. Uh, and, and we're going to try to sell it. I wouldn't even, I, I don't even know that I would do that. What I would do is I would go to fairs. I would go to food truck festivals. I would go to um, conventions and you hustle it there one one to one one to one if you want to keep that you know if you're if you're comfortable with that cost sitting at 250 dollars uh and and they want to buy it from you you know the manufacturer um the vendors want to buy it from you for like low 300s uh and you're you're not willing to get that cost down because you're not willing to go outside of your comfort zone as far as being made in america soup the nuts then that's okay. You got you have to turn that that weakness of price and convey that to actually built in America. This is like a hundred like the, the steel came from America. Every nut, every bolt, everything is sourced here in America. It and, and it's not just like, oh, the sticker is made in America. No, the whole thing is made in America. And so that's and, and and this goes not just for made in America, but made in any country uh, that's you're trying to, you know, wherever country you're watching this from, because obviously if you watched uh, one of our previous days, we have people in Iran, we have people in India, we have people literally all over the world watching this video right now with you, you super entrepreneur, you and I, um, I, I just I think that going direct and, and, and one at a time. You know, sell selling it. Uh, if its cost is two hundred and fifty dollars landed, then uh, I you know all all in. Then I would you know you try to get like five hundred, five fifty. I I think that's cheap. I I don't know what a rack costs. Um, maybe you know I can check. We'll look into at the end of this video. We're gonna check out their website and see what else they have going on. Uh, as of as of now, from you know, it's from like two thousand twelve. But I. I would like to see, um, I, you know, I, I, I'm curious as to w what the price is now and if there's, you know, competition. Look, if you're telling me, oh, uh, the competition is selling for like, you know, $500 or something like that, or, or I mean, if, if they want it for 300 325 so they're probably selling it for like 650 I, you know, I, I just, I don't see, 
you know, he so he would sell it to the vendors for like five, say five hundred, and then they got to mark it up from there. So you're still, you know, so then it, it, so it was okay, five hundred. So they, it's like a thousand dollars. So you're competing with something that's almost half the half the cost, uh, if if that's the case, um, or forty percent less. But you know, hammer home that that make that weakness into a strength, and and hammer that home. Go one at a time. Go to those those festivals, and and uh, go to those uh shows and conventions and conferences and things like that and get it in front of people let them touch and feel and and get up there and uh or it doesn't even have i mean if you have a bed you know like like what he has a show bed uh there you know get them to to play with it and and see if they like it and and make you know make that sale one at a time dollars in sales what was the profit nothing Well, because it's a startup. How much debt do you have? How much debt? There's about $75,000 on it. Uh, At $50,000 in sales, where your price point isn't even the accurate price point, you don't want to go overseas. You don't want to go overseas to bring it down to a price point where it can happen. I don't believe the I don't believe the quality can stay. So if you can find a quality manufacturer, can we take it overseas? Why not? See, that was see, that was a that was a slip there because uh, you know saying that you're you're worried about the quality. Uh, and, and, you know, there, look, when you take your manufacturing overseas, uh, there is a ton of hurdles. I mean, I personally haven't done that myself, but knowing, uh, from friends of mine and experiences that, you know, learned through here from Shark Tank, uh, and, and the, the amount of time that you have to give overseas to make sure that the product that's coming off the line is of spec of what you're doing, uh, and not just waiting for like, oh, yeah, we we shipped it and um, we're waiting. And then you wait two months for the container to get here. And it's like, oh, here comes the And the Super Entrepreneur t-shirts don't have the E for super. So it's S-U-P-R. And it's like, well, that how did that happen? That happened because you didn't get in the, you know, in a plane, fly to China and sit there and make sure that things aren't getting messed up. You know, and and they're not always going to be so nice and be like, oh, well, well, it just is what it is. We've already moved on. We, you know, we have so many orders. Like, it, if you don't order from us again, it's not going to make us even bad. We're not going to lose a wink of sleep over this. So, you know, it's it's on you to make sure that that quality is there. So I, I, I get what Donnie's saying. Um, and Damon is trying, you know, trying to kind of bait him into the idea that like, well, maybe it is quality. It's just, to, you know, probing to see if like, oh, if it's maybe if it's just quality that we're talking about, like, hey, Damon could get somebody or, you know, has somebody over there already uh, that can go check out the facility and have Donnie jump in, you know, every couple of months and make sure things are on track where they're supposed to be and the, keeping up the the quality. Uh, so it, it, it's a it's a it's a it's a lot easier to say, oh, just make it in China than it is to actually go and make stuff in China or or anywhere else in the world, for sure, that you're not there. Just it's not not what I'm going to do with my company. Right because now, I, I believe important. in what I, I believe in what I am. I believe in what I'm doing right now. And so if I can help in any way, I will. I, I think that should be coming across pretty strongly at this point. I don't. I don't. I don't think that anybody else should be trying to poke and prod. Uh, you know, poke a hole in what his his belief is. It, I mean, he, Donnie is uh, clearly extremely passionate about about what you know, keeping on the track. And a lot of times they come in. I mean, we saw it with the with um, you know Barbara hit uh, uh, Matt, uh, Rick Smith with it, right? Rick Smith Jr. with it, like. Oh, you know, what if we did something that that wasn't in Vegas? What if we, you know, we did something? Oh, yeah, I'm open to that too. Like, and then she's like, shit, big red flag, right? It's like, oh, alarms are sounding. I don't, you know, you're not that passionate about where you're trying to get to, so well, I'm out, right? Then that's um, unfortunate, but you know, it, it does. It's important to not come across desperate when you come across desperate when you come across. I need this. Uh, that's, that's when things, you know, kind of go off the rails. And, um, while I think Donnie, you know, seems to have a great product here and, and all the passion, it, it, you know, is just flowing through the room or at least from him, you know, from him, um, and, and standing, sticking to your guns like that's, that's awesome. And, and ding worthy for sure. But that's not a way that I believe I want to help. 
if you don't ever get to make it yourself as a company, who can you help? I believe I can make it. I know I can. Donnie, you yes, can't sir. solve the problem we're talking about here. One man can't do it. I'm talking about the problem of getting it done offshore. There's a reason that's happening. And there's a reason that a lot of the furniture manufacturers are coming back. Yeah, but you know, to say that the quality is bad everywhere offshore is wrong. Of, of course. And so I, I'm, I'm kind of stuck here. I mean, if you had a successful business and were manufacturing offshore, you'd be employing somebody. Mm. And as you grew, you'd be employing more people. Then you'd bring in here and employ more people. Right. You'd start more businesses and employ more people. If you were successful, people. you would need people to do sales. You need people to do marketing. You've got to do the right thing for the business, number one. Mm. And then everything else. If the business is healthy, everything follows through. I understand that for sure. But being successful will mean that he also still needs those people regardless. Um, and he'll get to help the people that aren't. Because, not look, you know, Robert, not everybody is a salesperson. It, you know, not every person is a, is a computer person. Not every person is able to be retrained. Look, we know here in America that the retraining programs that we've had have had very little success. People do what they love. That's why you're watching this video right now. You love to be able to do the business that you love and learn from others and, and live the life that you want to create for yourself. That's what being, you know, part of what being super and super entrepreneur is. And, you know, to, to say like, well, you're going to help, help other people. Yeah, you're going to help other people that uh, might not, you know, that like having salespeople that go out on the road is great, but not everybody's that person, right? Not everyone's living that life. Uh, and not everybody is that that's that person is living in the area in which he's trying to to help. So I, I, I you know, again, I applaud Donnie by for sticking to his guns here. Donnie can feel particularly resistant and closed minded, and that's a very bad partner to be in business with. Right? And for that reason alone, I'm out. The op complete opposite of what Barbara said in the Magic Rick video. Oh yeah, yeah, you're just like blowing in the wind. You'll take any opportunity that comes your way. Yeah, because he he's because he's willing to be flexible. But that wasn't good enough. And then Donnie sticking to his guns, and she no no, it, that's not good enough. Then it was in the same episode, same exact episode. <sighs> okay, now we're right in the meat of the numbers for racks that are on the market. I mean, we're not too expensive. We're not too inexpensive. No orders, my friend. Uh, you've made it impossible for the investor to get a return. Doesn't matter where it's made. Apple Computer, second largest company on earth after Exxon, employs 49,000 people here in America. But it knows it has to make its products offshore to be competitive and make a profit for shareholders, just like you do, Donnie. Mm -hmm. And I don't hear that, all right? So for me as an investor, I'm not interested because you don't want to do what it takes. That's the problem. I'm out. Again, I, I just, I, I, I understand where Mr. Wonderful's coming from. I don't agree. Uh, I I think that uh, I, I I think that if he you know like you said get it get it in people's hands like waiting around for you know sending out a hundred thousand dollars worth of displays and and waiting for people to pick up the phone and call you for more orders is not going to necessarily get it done, especially with people that are you know hardworking blue collar people and like that's literally who this is made for. Is you know, so he's making a product for the hardworking blue collar American uh, to to be able to have one truck, and he wants to employ those same blue collar people to make it here in America. And I, I it's it it's I I again I I don't totally disagree, but I think that what Donnie's trying to do is um, it just it, it it requires a a, a grander scope. Then like, yeah, we'll just get it made and then it'll ship here and then we can hire some salespeople or whatever and, you know, make it make it work like nah, that's that's not where he's going. And uh, clearly they're not going to they're not going to make the easy quick buck on this deal. Um, and, and they know that. Well, I do believe that it has potential. There are plenty of companies within the automotive market that are building in the United States. And part of what I saw at SEMA was a company that had taken their product to an Asian market to have it constructed. And now they are losing share because that Asian market has now created that product and has set up a booth right beside them in SEMA. And, and being able to sell that product right from under them without any integrity whatsoever. That yeah, but Donnie, integrity is not American or offshore. Yeah. Integrity is integrity based on a human being. I and mean, that's really not fair to say about to say that 
you could get screwed the same way in America as you could. I have no doubt about that whatsoever. Donnie, for sure. You absolutely can. I, I've I've talked about this at length, not in these videos, but um, you know, one of the downsides of America going offshore to manufacture so much and, and us becoming more of a service economy than a manufacturing economy or even a blend of uh, manufacturing and service and all that uh, is that you know we we effectively become our own middlemen. Um, and they already have the manufacturing to do it. So they don't like at a certain point, it's like, it becomes like, yeah, we don't, they don't really need us. They could just manufacture the stuff themselves and, and come and sell it. I mean, you see it with so many products. It's not just in the sense of like, oh, they, they took the designs and ran with it themselves. I mean, there's, there's ways to protect yourself in China. And if you, uh, if you, if you're familiar with, with, uh, I guess China's patent laws, like I'd, I'd love to hear you in the comments down below. Um, but it's, it, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's frustrating. Um, it's frustrating when that kind of stuff happens. Um, but you know, it, it, it is part of the game, right? The, uh, the pioneers get the arrows as they, as they say, uh, cause they went out first and, uh, and, but I, I, again, I still really think that Donnie's on something, uh, and he and he's look, you know, he's looking down the line, right? And that's something. I mean, even Apple, like you know, Mister Wonderful wanted to talk about Apple. Apple, uh, well, at one point, I don't think you know, if they even still do it now, but they were manufacturing, uh, and obviously not all the computer components. I don't know if any of the computer components of their Mac Pro line was being made in America, uh, and I don't know if that's still the case, but it was the case at one point uh, in the last ten years. That they that they did that, and I mean, I think that's, I, I think I think that's awesome. Um, but of course, those Mac Pros are way more expensive than your iPhone, more expensive than you know most of the t most of the items that they are selling. So they have the ability to work that pr into the price, and the people that are buying those Mac Pros won't bat an eye. You know, I believe that there's three courses and phases you go through in life, and I went through the same phase. First, I had to make it. Then I had to master it, and now I can matter. And I think that you're trying to do all at the same time. Okay. And I don't think that you're doing it successfully. So I would have to regretfully say that I'm out. Okay. This had, this had to be really tough for Donnie to go through. Uh, you know, a very tough experience. And and Donnie, if you're watching, I would absolutely love to have you uh, come on the show and and talk about your Shark Tank experience and everything since then. So drop drop a comment down below, and we'll get together. Uh, make that interview happen, but uh, you know, to to speak on to speak on Damon, uh, what he just said, I, I I I think, I mean, there's so many different ways to make it, right? It's there's no one path to success. There's no and 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 success is very very subjective per person, uh, and and you hopefully you as a super entrepreneur watching this know know that, right? Um. You have to make sure that you are doing what you are really passionate about and willing to lose it all over it, right? It, it, it has to, be, you know, what you're doing has to matter so much to you. And that's exactly what Donnie's done here. He's, he's you know, he believes in the product. Uh, he believes in the people around him. And you know, he, he does, he, everything doesn't have to be a quick race to the top. I mean, anybody that's selling you a fast opportunity to go and like, you know, make a million dollars is, is it's not, it's, it's not that it's not real, but the results that were given might not be the results that you're going to receive. Um, speaking of which you have, uh, <laughs> how to rocket your sales free PDF down below, uh, in the, in the description. So go check that out. If you want to send your sales, uh, up on a rocket there, but I, you know, I, I really think that you can do all those things. And we've even seen, you know, so many examples here on shark tank of businesses doing things. I mean, Bombas, uh, I don't know. I don't, he hasn't done, but he hadn't got, uh, come across Bombas yet, but Bombas gives away a, pair, a free pair of socks every time they sell a pair of socks. So they hadn't necessarily made it yet, but in Donnie's point, 
to Do you know to Damon's point about Donnie, he hadn't sold enough units at a at a particular price point yet to prove the model. You know, he's he's only made you know he's basically done it for free at this point. There's three shocks out. There's only Mark and Robert left. All right. Start focusing on that. Okay. It's a factory worker, son. Oh no, I hear you. Oh man. Oh, man. I mean, you know, this is the land of opportunity. This is the look, America's land of opportunity. It welcomes all. It's tough. It's tough when people lose their jobs, but it's a global economy. I think Americans can compete on a world-class scale anywhere. Mm -hmm. So whether you make it here or you make it there, you build a successful business. It's not about made in America because we're all immigrants. We would have never had the opportunity to come here if if everybody thought that way. And, and, and again, I'm trying not to be disrespectful because sure. my dad was a factory worker. You know, when we came here, he worked in a factory and swept floors right. for a guy who was proud from the country. That, You know, I just remember my dad came here and worked in the factory. You know, people made fun of him because he wasn't American. And they called him all kinds of names. And it, it, it hurt him deeply. You know, my dad passed away last year, dying. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And uh, I just, I always asked him what was he the most proud of. And the first factory job not when he made some money, not when he got promoted. That factory job where he swept floors, you know, that made him proud. So I admire what you're doing, but I just can't get involved with with something where you're not taking care of the business. I, I'm sorry, I'm out. That's, I mean, that is so, that is so, so, so tough, right? Here, you're going through uh, this pitch and, and, you know, it, it pulls on the heartstrings there about how, you know, he, he you know, his dad had a fact. Look, my um, my great grandfather, like, you know, uh, was a street sweeper and 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 was a huckster uh, in Philly. You know, selling selling vegetables and fruit off the back of a truck. And you know, I I think it's so important to to understand that. You know, if if this if this brings Robert to tears, right? Like thinking about it, because it it probably you know weighed on his mind that he's saying no to something that could be awesome for uh, for people, you know that that are that were like him, like his dad, you know, and in, in in tough situations again to, to again to so to throw out like oh well you're gonna hire customer service people and you're gonna hire salespeople, yeah, but not everybody's gonna be those people. Right. And and these other people deserve an opportunity, you know, whether whether they're Americans new to America, um, you know, there's so, this is this is the land of opportunity. And it just it seems like for for one hundred thousand dollars that there was an opportunity for for Robert to like really embody, um, uh, you know, a type of business that you know, he, he grew up from and, uh, and that, that's a shame. I, I wonder, I wonder if Robert, um, regrets that at all. Like I said, we'll, we're going to look at their website and social media and stuff after at the end here. Let's see what, uh, Mark decides to do. Is Donnie's last chance to make a deal? No, Donnie, there's, there's a couple of elements here. One, I don't agree with where they're coming from in terms of you have to squeeze every dollar. There's always a give and take. But what I, what I see here is a very capital intensive business, right? Just $100,000, give or take, just for the point of purchase. Mm -hmm. Another two hundred to $250,000 plus in order to be able to get to another price point to be able to appease your customers. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, that creates a very difficult return on investment opportunity for me. Right. I would love to be able to say, you know what, let's just get behind Donnie. Let's just make this happen, right? But there's no amount of capital right now that's going to get us to a point where, you know, it's obvious that you're over the hump, right? Right. And so, un unfortunately, I'm, I'm out. It's okay. All right, great. Thank you, Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, something there. I don't. I don't know that I've ever seen anybody else uh, shake everybody's hands uh, 
after after the pitch, especially after such a dejecting outcome um, and and battering of his not only I mean belief and um, optimism and and faith that things are going to to work out. You know what? You know what's special about this? Good old American ingenuity is alive and well. The American dream is alive and well. I don't disagree, but his primary point was, I'm going to make it here. And Kevin brought up a good point. If you could make it cheaper and build the business, would you do it? And he said, no. I want to take care of my own. I want people to to have this product and enjoy this product, knowing that the hands of the people in this country put it together. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's see uh, how they're doing. So it's uh, DZ, which actually I, I keep I was trying to look up before I did this video. Um, I think we were we sold DZ at uh, at, at our company uh, back when we were Pardo Truck Parts. Back when we were Pardo. Oh, there we go. Pardo Truck Parts uh, part, was Truck Service Parts Warehouse Incorporated is a long, long name. But uh, yeah, I'm like pretty sure towards the end uh, of that before that company was sold, we were we were selling uh, DZ, um, stuff for trucks, uh, heavy, like heavy duty trucks, but it looks like they, they're the ones that took over the, uh, the Invisirac. Cause when I went to type in Invisirac here in Amazon, um, it came up as a DZ product and they're selling it for $588. So I don't know I'm not. I, I maybe he sold to Invisirac. Um, I actually, you know what? I know that I could. Uh, let me see here. I think I have it under here. Uh, da, 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 impress. This is 500 pound capacity. But it was definitely higher than that. Um, yeah, I, this uh, doesn't have like a good update on on what exactly happened but uh but yeah i mean it's got 34 34 reviews I, I would expect it to have more than that though all weight bearing parts are plastic as of 2017 so i, I don't know if uh he sold it to dz or he because uh, i don't think i don't think he found a dz but maybe 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 Donnie did i'd love that donny i'd love again love to have you come on come on the show and uh and talk about what happened uh with your shark tank experience and 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 everything that happened after that after that uh i don't yeah i don't think i mean we definitely we definitely remember selling dz stuff but i don't remember yeah it's been around since 1977 so i'm i'm guessing that he either they knocked him off and called it the same thing uh potentially or, um, or uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it just they just link to to DZ and buy from Amazon. So, I I'm not I'm not sure what what exactly happened. But what I am sure of is that I enjoy getting comments down below, like the one from Regular Guy Reacts. I think a product that we all need and would blow up is a plastic bag that is 100% recyclable. Ding, ding. One, yes, we absolutely do need that uh, in our lives. So if you have an idea or a comment or an, a question about you know what I can help you with your business, please leave a comment like regular guy reacts down below. I'd be happy to help you with any of your business needs here on the Super Joe Pardo Show. Uh, I hope you have an amazing day. I'll see you in one of these next videos. Take care.